Hello. Sabi niyo nga magandang umaga sa katabi niyo. Oo, pakisagot naman nung sinabihan, mas maganda ka pa sa umaga. Oh, di ba? Uh, welcome naman po natin si Sister Lulu. She's around. Sister Lulu. Uh, pakitapos ko magsabi yung chocolate ko, pakitabi lang ha. Okay. okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Almighty Father God, uh, we praise your name and we give you thanks. Puspus po kayo ng kabutihan sa aming buhay. Kayo po palagi ang nagbibigay ng direksyon and ang mga prayers po namin ay kayo rin po Panginoon ang, ang nagbibigay Panginoong kapahintulutan na kasagutan. Maraming salamat Panginoon sa mga sa mga pa, pangaral na ibinibigay mo sa amin. Maraming salamat din Panginoon. Uh, ang binigay mo lesson ngayon Panginoon, gabayan mo kami Panginoon sa aming pagsisharing. In Jesus Christ name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ang ganda po ng ano, ng aki pong lesson na binigay sa akin. Um, nag, nag, ano po sa akin si Sir F, text mo na, sabi niya, yung binigyan kita na outline na FB. Okay, sabi ko, Sir, okay na ako. Kasi nag-download ako sa WCG. Sa, ah, sa GCI pala, kay Mike Fisher. Pero nakakatawa kasi sinama niya si Ismail at kasi <laughs> yung anak na si Isaac. Eh, nung binasak ko si buhay niya, may sarili pala silang kwento. So, hindi ko sila sinali rito hanggang kay Ibram lang ako. Thank you. Sige. So, simulan na po natin, ha? Okay. Pwentuhan na lang po ang gagawin natin. God's covenant with Abraham is, is found in Genesis 15, 16, and 17. Okay. Kung ano naman tayo ng definition. Definition po ng covenant. So, baka hindi nakakaalam. A covenant is a binding agreement, a contract. So, yung mag-asawa, pag kayo po ipumirma ng kontrata, ng marriage, it's a covenant. It's a vow. And then God promises to man as recorded in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It is a promise to buy or enter into a covenant. Okay. So, konting lakad tayo sa history. A lesson in history. So, tingnan po natin yung history muna. Uh, Genesis 11, 20, 10 to 25. Yung, ito yung, yung normally kasi dia, genealogy nila, maraming mga kung ano-ano sanga-sanga. Pero ito, diretso talaga kagad, no? So, 10 name genealogy from Shem, Noah's, Noah's uh, son to Abraham. Di ba tatlo anak niya? Si Shem yung pinanggalingan to Abraham. Then, uh, in 1126, Terah became the father of Abraham. Ay, Abraham muna pala. Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Ito yung account ni Terah. Si Terah, na pangasawa niya, si Amasla. So, sa, new, sa study Bible, walang asawang, walang mother na mention. But, uh, sa true research, nakita na meron sa ibang, ibang gospel. So, si Abraham married to Sarai. Sarai is his half-sister. And then, Nahor uh, married to Milka. Uh, 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 his niece and then Haran si Haran namatay sa, do, sa urno uh, anak niya si Lot very familiar si Lot then Milka and Iska nice yung pangalang Iska kasi may friend ako Iska ngayon tawag ko sa kanya Iska oh, hindi ka pala biblical pala yung pangalan mo para si Iska siya okay Terah took his son Abram and wife Sarai his grandson Lot to Haran and settled there Abram's brother Nahor and family were left behind at Ur now Iraq so, tayo, tingin tayo ng mapa. Okay. Ito yung mapa nila. Okay. They traveled northwest along the trade route of the Euphrates River. Makikita natin yung Euphrates on the left, yung isang mahabang yun. Okay. And dito yung uh, Ur. Makikita natin ito yung Ur sa baba. Malapit sa saan, malaki yung summer. Ur, Persian Gulf. And then yung ng Haran sa taas. Okay. Terra lived 205 years and died in Haran. Haran, the place is spelled or pronounced differently. Kasi di ba sabi natin, may anak siyang pangalan na Haran. Sa, 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 sa Hebrew, ibang spelling. Hindi ko na na-research yun. So, and then, itong parehong lugar na to, they, they, they are worshiper, moon gods worshiper at both Ur and Ir Haran, now Israel. And Terah was an actual idol maker siya eh. And uh, an idol worshiper, uh, nakikita natin sa Joshua 24.2. So he felt at home at Haran. And the place is a flourishing caravan city kasi talagang daanan siya eh. May isang minention dito na, kataka ka bakit minention? Si Sarai. So, nakasingin siya doon sa ano eh, sa in between ng Genesis 11 eh. Now Sarai was barren, she had no children. So ang tanong is, why the emphasis on the sterility of Sarai? 
God showed that His people will not come from the scattered post-Babel people. Di ba last, last week, pinakita natin yung post-Babel, kaya sa nag-different like languages, because of their sin, uh, nis-scattered sila. Ni-emphasize lang dito, God was bringing a new humanity into being of whom Abraham was the father. Thank you. So, tuloy tayo ulit, no? And now, we, we go now to the account of Abraham. Uh, Abram was born of or uh, Abram or Abram sa, sa Jewish no and it started with a humble beginning. Uh, the three largest monotheistic re- religion considered them consider him as their founding father. In Jewish Torah nakikita siya doon, Muslim Quran nakikita siya doon and the Christian the Bible as one of his great greatest patriarch. Today, two branches of his family, aware naman tayo, nag-aaway pa rin silang ngayon. Di ba? The Muslim, because of the Ismael, and the uh, Jews, because of their, of uh, Isaac, di ba? Continue to battle their birthrights. Uh, dito, dito, Jewish tradition narrates that Abram was the son, mention ko na kanina, was the son of the idol maker. And, um, nagpakita na siya noon ng devotion to one God. Tatay niya gumagawa ng, ano, ng mga idol, no? Yung trabaho niya. Ginawa niya, sinira niya lahat, no? Uh, naka-record niya sa Torah. And he's, na, he's mass his father, uh, all his father's idol except one. It's a foreshadow that of his devotion for one God. And in Quran, uh, Quirento naman, tells of a son comforting his father Terra about his idol worship and was condemned to burn in the furnace of King Animrod. Kita mo lang, dyan sa tradisyon, nag, ano sila eh, an, uh, 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 ano na sila, di ba? Hindi na sila kasundo. Okay, game. Okay, ito na. Ito na sa Genesis. What's the significance of the change of name from Abram to Abraham? Sabi ni Gaza 4, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will, def- you will be the father. Kula na lang bino. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you father of all nations. So Abram kasi ang, ang normally sa Jewish, ang, yeah, referring to the uh, someone, somebody exalted. So it's, it's more of a, it's a referring, nire-refer nito sa God the Father. And Abraham means father of many. Siguro wala naman sa atin dito father of many, di ba? Dapat many ka, one wife lang, okay? Katawagin kitang Abraham. Joke. Okay. Tandahan lang seryoso, mamaya pang seryoso, no? Cool lang tayo, okay? Next. Ito na yung call ni Abraham. Ni Abraham. The Lord has said to Abraham, Leave your country, Ur, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Itong, itong sa ano niya, sa 2-3, meron God's promise to Abraham has seven-fold structure. So tingnan natin ano mo yan. One, I will make you a great nation. Two, I will bless you. Three, will make you your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse. Whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. We will be looking on, thank you Lord, on the item 7. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. What is the significance of this covenant? The promise by and between God and Abraham. <coughs> Dapat pala Abraham na yan kasi na, na, na rename na siya. No? First, it is God reinstatement. God reinstatement of the original blessing to Adam and Eve on all mankind was restored and fulfilled through Abraham and his offspring. Take note, offspring, walang S. And in Genesis 1.28, God blessed them, Adam and Eve, and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, Fill the earth and subdue it. So day one pa lang, creation, makikita mo God. Man is God representative in the created world. A steward of God's creation. A steward of God's creation. So tingnan natin, sabi natin, di ba, kahinighlight natin yung seventh promise. The seventh promise was reaffirmed in, my reference is NIV Study Bible. Si Peter, sa Acts 3.25, kausap niya ang Jewish uh, uh, audience niya, no? And you are the ears of the prophets and the covenant God made with your fathers. 
He said to Abraham, Through your offspring, ayun na naman, kita natin, no? walang S, offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. And in Galatians, si Paul naman, kausap niya yung mga Gentile, at kasama tayo doon. In 7, understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. 8, the scripture foresaw that God will justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So concluding, so those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. And in Romans, a clearer version, therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to Abraham offspring. Not only to those who are of the, la- the law, yung sa, yan ay sa, yung refer ni Peter, but also to those of faith of Abraham. He is father of us all. Pakiulit nga. He is father of us all. Next page, please. And in Acts, Ang ginamit ko reference dito, inulit ko lang. Uh, ginamit ko po rito ay uh, Life Application Bible. Mas maliwanag eh. Acts 3.25 You are the children of this prophet and you are included in God's promise to your ancestors to bless the entire world to the Jewish race that the promise of God gave to Abraham. And in Galatians, uh, Paul talking to the, to the Gentiles, you can see from this, he refers to Abraham's faith, that the real children of Abraham are all the men of faith who truly, truly trust in God. What's more, the scripture look forward to this time when God would save the Gentiles also through their faith. And God told Abraham about this long ago when he said, I will bless those in every nation who trust in me as you do. And so it is. And so it is. All who trust in Christ share the same blessing I Abraham received. So, ay yung binigay ni God dun sa kanyang seven blessings, sevenfold blessing the last. The same blessing we are now are enjoying. And in Romans, so God blessings are given to us by faith as a free gift. We are certain to get them whether or not we follow Jewish custom. If we have faith like Abraham, for Abraham, sabi nga natin sa una, father of us all, when it comes to matter of faith. For matters of faith. So, importante po yun. Di ba sa Hebrews, ya kasama dun sa matpatriyak. Let's look at the inclusiveness of Abraham covenant. Wala tong exclusive, hindi pwede yan para sa Jews lang, para sa, sa ganyan. No? Ito inclusive of the Abrahamic covenant. In Genesis 17.7, 7, sabi niya rito, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for generations to come. Pati darating pa. Pati maging anak at apo natin sa tuho, sa talampakan. Sa talampakan pa nga po. Whatever. Generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And in Galatians, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and ears according to the promise. Therefore, Christians are Abraham's true and spiritual descendants. Sarap, no? Nung sinabi pala ni God yun, day one pala, kasali na tayo, kasama na tayo sa plano niya. In Acts 3.22-25, uh, in English, nagsiningit ko lang po yung like Moses Diyan na ba yan? Next page po Diyan ba yan? Ah, okay Like Moses who said The Lord will raise a prophet For you like me from among your own people And you must listen to everything he tells you And you are ears of the prophets And the covenant God, God made with all your fathers he said to Abraham Through your offspring Through your offspring all on earth will be blessed. Mamiya na natin hulaan sino yung offspring na yan. But I think by this time, we already have may buna sa kaisipan natin. Let's go to application. An application, ano pa kailan mo kay Abraham? Tagal-tagal na nun eh. But this is the reality that God gave me. 
Father Abraham and you. Ang reference ko po ito, dinownload ko sa GCI. Uh, let us, uh, Abraham, the real story by Michael Fisher, year 2003, from GCI site. Obedience. We always heard of Father Abraham who trusts God that he went, did not hesitate, but just packed and left everything, his country, his father's household, and went. And often told, tayo again, di ba? Be obedient! Sabi ni God, di ba? And often told that this is the way to show our obedience to God. When God said, jump, jump ka! Hindi mo tatanungin how high God, jump ka lang. Totoo ba to? Aminin. Aminin. But is this true? It usually take us a while to get out, to get our acts together. Of course, we want to do. We want to follow God. We might want to do what God wants us to do, but we chicken out. Misa natatakot tayo, eh, di ba? Aminin. Kasi si pagsigad nagbigay ng challenges at test sa atin. Di ba? We may get even, oh, gawin natin, start mo rin yan. What God tells us, but halfway, ya, ano muna, may papark mo. Teka muna, meron mas una eh. Di ba? We do not finish. Ang maganda rito, sabi sa Bible, dyan sa lesson ni, ano, ni Mr. Fisel, do not worry. Abraham was also slow. Sabi nyo, kala nyo, tayo siya kagad. Hindi ah. Abraham was slow about getting out of your, con of your country, the Ur, from your relatives and your father. Remember, yung sa una sa ating walk on the history, it was his father, Tera, who moved them out. Who moved them out. Ma'am, dito po. Who moved them out of Ur. Ur is a very comfortable place. Joy na joy na sila doon. It's very wealthy. Sabi nga natin, it is a, uh, uh, ka ano yun, ano yun, ano yun, ano yun, ano yun, ano yun, caravan route. Diba? When God spoke to Abraham, he was still in the comfort of Ur. Sabi dito, diba? And it was his father, Tera, who moves Abraham, wife Sarai, and nephew Lot out of Ur to Haran. Genesis 11:31. And Terah died at Haran at the age of 205. And Abraham was 75 years old when he left Ur. Ba komportable yung komportable yung mama? Kaya lang, tatay na to eh. Di ba? Sunod siya sa tatay. Next. Obedience. Now we have gone out to faithful. Pag sabi yung faithful, Abraham ka agad tayo, di ba? Abraham was always referred to as God's faithful. He barely started. Ito nakakatawa. And he barely started in the, papunta sa land of promise. Hindi ka pa siya nakakasettle maigi sa uri. Eh, merong pamin. Aba, ay, umalis ka agad sila. Punta siya sa Egypt. And you know the kwento of Egypt. Di ba? Alam natin kwento sa Egypt. He chose to move out. Sabi niya, di ba? He chose to move. Sana yon. To move to Egypt and there was a trouble waiting. We know the story of Sarai being liked by the Egyptian king. And Abraham told Sarai to introduce herself as his sister. Kasi, fear of life. Faithful, ah. Yeah. Tayo rin ganun eh. Like Abraham, we handled our affairs, our issues, by seeking the shortest, the shortcut. Ano yung mas madali? Again, we, like Abraham. But despite of that, ang faithfulness is na kay God, despite of this shady face, God blessed Abraham and his household. God even protected Sarai and bring back Abraham into the promised land, richer when he came back, when he went there. Kasi sabi nung hari, nagkasakit yung hari eh. Di ba? Nagkasugat-sugat yan everything. Nalaman niya na asawa pala ni Abraham si Sarai. So, nung umalis siya, take everything, binigyan pa niya. Kaya mas mayaman pang bumalik yung mama sa promised land. Question. Who then is the faithful one to comply with the terms of the agreement? At ang agreement is always by and between, but this time, di ba? Alam natin ang sagot dyan. Next po. 
lessons to learn. God is faithful even at times you are not. Yes or no. Amen. The story of Abraham and Sarah, and Sarah, the bago ni pangalan ni Sarah, are not models of how to be prosperous when obedient, but instead show God's faithfulness to those who call upon his name. Abraham trusted God to be faithful to his promise, despite all odds and his short-sightedness. Alam niyo kwento niyo, no? That you are my sister thing. Yung nag-give in siya kay Lot, alam mo yung kwento kay Lot din, ang ganda-ganda ng lugar niya. Si Lot is the son of the Haran, yung kanyang brother na namatay. Mahal niya yung sila, ano, sabi niya, sige, ikaw Lot, pumili ka. Eh, siyempre, ang Lot naman, eh, magaling din. Kahit ikaw, eh, tayo, pagbinigay. Sabi ng tatay, piliin mo, pinaka, siyempre, kukurit yung pinakamarami, pinakaabundan. Kinuha niya. Sa kanya, nag-start siya ulit. Ganun siya. God is faithful to Abraham as he is faithful to us. Yes or no? But he's not faithful to do the kind of things we thought God should do for us, like giving us what we long or what we need. This is an eye-opener. Because when we start praying, we always say, give, give, give. Us, us, us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pagkabigay. Hindi ka nagsasabing thank you bago pa. There is no such thing as an answered prayer. All our prayers are answered. Amen? Kasi tayo, sanay tayo ng yes nang lang, ng yes ang prayer. Hanggang sumasagot din ng no. Hindi bagay sa'yo, makakasira sa buhay mo, anak eh. At wait. Kaya nga napakasignifikan yung wait upon the Lord. Di ba? Not faithful to do the kind of things we thought God should do for us. Like giving us what we long or what we need. It's a one-sided yan eh, di ba? But faithful, God is faithful in His redemptive purpose for us. His new creation of which He was made as part of Him in Christ Jesus. Day one pa lang, di ba? Yun ang sinasabi niya, my offspring, I will bless you, my told me. True me. This is, balik mong anak yun. But He is faithful in the redemptive purpose for us, His new creation of which He made us part of Him in Christ. Kasi God, nung magkaroon ng fall, gusto niya ibalik tayo, reconciliation, kaya nga Christ is our bridge, our reconciliator. Diba? Gusto niya ibalik tayo doon sa kasama niya. Next. Parang kulang, no? Wala na ba? Atras mo nga konti. Okay. A new creation in Christ. In the same way, as we read in the Abraham story, we are all redeemed. No? We are all redeemed to recover ownership of paying full. Di ba, pag nagsangla tayo, pag nabayaran na natin, di ba, binabayaran niyo, kanilang pwede magsangla, di ba, pwede tubusin yun eh, ng kalahati lang. Di ba? Sino hindi nagsasangla dito, taas ang kamay? Okay, hindi pa nakaranas ng sangla. Oh. Wala isasangla pala. Ayun, ah, eh, ibang kwento yun, wala isasangla eh. But nevertheless, alam natin, ang sanglaan, hindi mo pwedeng ikunin yung, yung sinangla nang hindi ka nagbayad in full. Redeemed. Yun yun. And we are all redeemed. Your personal story, our personal stories, your shortcoming and failures, even the record of your weaknesses are all redeemed by God through Christ Jesus. At hindi lang kala i-redeemed. Hindi ka lang binayaran. Siya pa yung magta-transform sa iyo. Without your effort. And God has transformed you and your life story to something new. A new creation in Jesus Christ. Pakisabi lang nga natin, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. In conclusion, 
in Christ, we put our troubled past behind and trust his word, as Moses said. Listen to his word. Listen to it. So 2 Corinthians 5.17, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. You are ears. You're not the same anymore, and a new life has begun. Are you ears? And we are ears to the promise. Ano ba ears sa Tagalog? Tagapagmana. We are ears to the promise. And Galatians, sinabi rito, And because we are His sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. So now we rightly speak of our God as our dear Father. Now, we are no longer slaves, but God's own sons. And since we are his sons, anything he belongs to him is anything he has belong, he belong to him belongs to, to us. Kasi yun ang plano niya eh. For that is the way God planned. Nung ginawa niya ang creation, yan ang plano niya. Lahat ng akin ay sa iyo, through Christ Jesus. Kaya nga naging co-ears ka ni God eh. Co-ears ka ni, ni Christ. Ang sarap, di ba? Wow! Ako nang binabasa ko, wow! Wow! Kaya dapat nito tayo nakakaramdam na, wawa naman ako, namalita ko, mas maganda siya, mas ba... Ano yun? Anak ako ng Diyos eh! Ginawa ko sa image ni God. Yan ang plano ni God sa atin, no? Now we are no longer slaves. Slave for sins, slave kung ano-ano yung pinagkagawa natin na alam nating kalaban ni God, abomination kay God, mga idols natin dyan kung ano-ano, our work, our money, our face, our beauty, our fortunes are all idols. But we are God's own sons. And since we are His sons, anything He has, he has, the, he has belongs, mali English ko dyan, ano? He belongs to Him that belongs to him, teacher, tama ba? That belongs to him, belongs to us. For that is the way God planned. Day one pa lang. Palakpakan nga natin si God para dyan. Wow, it's really something that we, we appreciate it. Tinan natin yung kwento ng the law and the promise. The law and the promise. Alam natin law, di ba? It's a Pabili na tayo, what is the law and the promise. In Galatians 3, 16 to 17, the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed, referring to Christ. Meron ba kayo naisip? Sino yung offspring, isang seed? Baka may iba kayong pangalan na naisip? It's Christ. The scripture does not say, and to his seed. Ito mas malino na malino siya eh. Meaning many people, but and to your seed, referring to Christ, meaning one person who is Christ. Take note yung Galatia na yan. We are the ears of the promise. We are not the ears of the law. We are the ears of the promise. And sa sabi nga ni Paul, it means the law introduced 430 years later. Later, di ba? Yan ginawa ni law kay Bounces, no? does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and do away with the promise. So, promise, and na tayo talaga nakasentro. And in Galatians, this, I want you to put on your head. Basahin natin sabay-sabay. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and ears according to the promise. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Almighty Father God, we thank you and we can appraise you enough, Father God, for this privilege of being your son. We know, Father God, that all the blessings that we have mentioned before, the forthcoming blessing you've given me, giving us, giving my family, giving each other's family, everything, Lord, is in accordance to your promise to Christ Jesus. Maraming salamat, Ama, sa 
learning na ito, Lord. Now we took for granted, Father God, the privilege of being a Christian. But now we know better. Kayo po ang gagawa na ito sa buhay namin. Kayo magpapakilo sa buhay namin. At kayo po, Panginoon, magtatasform sa amin through your Spirit. Maraming maraming salamat, Ama, sa pribilayong ito. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord.